and welcome to this episode of Create a Life You Love with Tony G. I'm a world-renowned psychic medium channel, hypnotist, healer, author, and TV show host. I've created a life I absolutely love, and people are always asking me, how did you get to where you are now? But how do you do that? How do you get from you know your purpose to your living your purpose and your passion? So I wanted to create a platform that allows people to see not only how I got to where I am today, but how many others in other fields got to where they are today. Is it destiny? Is it a choice? You watch and you decide. Today's guest is Lucas Robach. Hi, Lucas. How are you today? I'm doing awesome. Thank you, Tony. How are you doing? <laughs> Great. It's such an honor, and I'm so excited to have you on this show because you are really changing the face of health and wellness, and we'll get to that in a moment. Okay. So, but I, the first question that I have for you, because you are, you are, um, running a wellness fair, not currently, correct? Correct. Excellent. So my first question is, did you grow up going to expos and wellness fairs? Uh, state fair. Okay, yeah. The, uh, the sports show at <laughs> state fair grounds, but other than that, no, it wasn't something that I dreamt about ever doing. It wasn't something that I ever really thought about. It's more something, it just fell into my lap. Okay, let's talk about that. How did it fall into your lap? Because there are people out there that think, I would love to run a wellness fair or an expo with a, or any expo with, you know, whether it be a, a sports expo or whatever. So mm -hmm. how did this just fall into your lap? Uh, well, it goes back a few years okay. to uh, 2014. I got diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And after I got diagnosed, I looked up uh, like what it was. I had never heard of it before. I had no, no clue what I just got diagnosed with, diagnosed with. And after reading the first sentence on Wikipedia, I decided I'm no longer going to learn about what it is. Like, I don't, it doesn't matter what it is, it's how to successfully live with it. And so I started researching how to successfully live with MS. And it was essentially all uh, Eastern medicine. Uh, we have uh, chiropractic, massages, uh, acupuncture, essential oils, just a lot of different things that aren't covered by insurance. And so just once, once I found that out and couldn't find a nonprofit that offers t those types of treatments to people with chronic illnesses, we shifted the mission over of my uh, nonprofit that I started five years earlier. And okay. so that's like a whole nother story that we can get into a little bit later. Yeah, I can't wait. But <laughs> uh, going back to the wellness fair, so I was, I'm also a certified master NLP practitioner. That's NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Yes. So if you know Tony Robbins, Tony Robbins does NLP all the time. Right. That's what he does. You really don't know it unless you know NLP, then you can tell a little bit. He's such a master at it that it's even tough to tell when he's doing it. But I was already being a, a vendor at fairs, just in terms of marketing, trying to market my practice. And after I got diagnosed, I started volunteering uh, to uh, help organize the fairs and run the fairs and just doing what I can to learn more about the health and wellness field. I really dove into it. And Karen Conway used to be the organ- Love her. Karen, oh, you know Karen? Love yeah. her, right? She's an amazing woman. So uh, amazing. Uh, she's a lot of fun. but. Uh, she was the organizer of the Milwaukee Holistic Health Expo and was moving out of town and she didn't know what to do with it. So she asked me to take over and it took me about a week to say yes, but I finally did say yes. And that's actually how I became the organizer of the wellness fair. It was essentially being diagnosed with MS and Karen Conway uh, asking me to take over. So I believe, and thank you for sharing that, I believe in destiny. I believe mm -hmm. there are certain things we're here, we're destined to become a part of, if you will. And some mm -hmm. people will say, nope, we have free will, we can do whatever we want. I think they run a thin line together, mm -hmm. I really do. Now, since you've taken over the wellness fair, 
what have you done with it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's another long answer. Uh, so kind of like backtracking once again before yeah. I even said yes to Karen to become the organizer was that uh, months before I said I'm no longer doing vendor fairs. Vendor fairs are a waste of my time, it's not worth it to me. And the reason why is because in my mind I wasn't maximizing my time, I wasn't leveraging it appropriately because I'm going to the a fair one time for four hours, six hours, 12 hours, however long it is, and then you have to uh, get all the results that you're producing are from that amount of time. And then you can't really use that before the event or after the event. And one of the reasons why I did say yes was because I, uh, numerous ideas came to me the night before of me actually telling Karen that I was gonna say no. And then the night before is when I got all the reasons to say yes. And that's to pretty much create uh, an area for people to be a part of our event one time and then leverage us for a lifetime. Nice. So when it comes to what is it that uh, we're doing differently, we're starting to record episodes for a podcast. Nice. We already have 13 episodes out there on SoundCloud right now. And we're now uh, recording a lot so that when we go to iTunes, we're able to have a consistent weekly episode. And then another thing that we're doing is we're publishing a book every fall. So every, each fall, we're able to turn... Uh, get numerous people to become entrepreneurs, is what I call them, so that they're able to use the book as a marketing asset, as well as it's another way to educate the community, get their word out, be found, be more visible. Um, and it's lifetime, a book is forever. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other things that we're doing is we do a quarterly digital magazine. We haven't really come up with a clever name for it yet, just call it the digital magazine, because it's a PDF <laughs> <laughs> that we do. We do uh, every quarter, and the most engaged articles in that magazine, in the digital magazine, are gonna be in the printed magazine, which we're printing once a year for the fall event. So instead of having like a program guide or something, it'll be an actual magazine with other articles in it, plus the program itself for like all the vendors and the layout of the, the event. We have a guest blog, so other people are able to uh, guest blog on, the webs on our website. And I was actually just looking up uh, some of our statistics. Our website is ranked one of the, uh, in the top quarter percent of 1% of all websites in the world. Wow. So out of 50 million plus websites in the world, we're in the top 400,000. My web developer, Keith Klein, he says it's 500 million websites in the world. So I just conservatively say 50 million websites, and it's still an impressive number. We're in the top 400,000. Wow, so that's when amazing. you have uh, like a, we're driving a lot of traffic to our website. We have a membership website as well, so, uh, which means that we have a business directory. So if you went on there, you'd be able to create an account so that people are able to find you, whether if they type, type in psychic, medium, clairvoyant, Tony Green, uh, your zip code, whatever that might be, they'd be able to find you in our business directory that way. So it's another way for uh, uh, people to find quality practitioners because we interview everybody they go through an extensive application process and then we interview everybody on it well if you want to be a part of the fair or not so you don't have to take part in any of our events in order to have a, a free profile on our website what else are we doing I know that's not it so that's not that's not everything so but. let me recap really quickly yeah. so if, you, if you're going to be a vendor at the fair there's a podcast you're a part of there's the digital magazine, there's a spot on the website and in the blog. Mm -hmm. And I know you said something else that I'm not quite remembering, but uh, I will later. I, <laughs> I will. <laughs> I figured out a couple more. Okay. All right, so once you become a vendor, you'll have lifetime access to submit articles to the digital magazine and then also lifetime access to guest blog on our website. So nice. the reason why I brought up our, our website ranking was because the more links that you have on our website point to your website, the uh, more likely it is that that business is gonna be found whether, depending upon what keyword is, they type into Google. So it's nice. gonna increase your uh, visibility. And it's gonna be, for people that are looking for that information, it's just a lot easier for them to find it as well. Which, um, for me, I'm, I'm a nerd and it takes me, like I, spend a lot of time researching and looking for stuff, and this is a way to just make it a lot more uh, accessible. 
Right. At least in my world, it's more accessible. Right, and <laughs> that's really important because we have come to a digital world where, yes, fairs are nice to go to, but if, if people can access all of this information online, once they get to the fair, they know exactly who's there, what they're looking for, and what these practitioners um, and vendors have to offer them. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about the fair itself. We are pulling. We have uh, people from all over the country and uh, Canada as well. Uh, one person from uh, Australia is actually filling out an application. She started it yesterday. So nice. two countries, three countries Yay. right now. Uh, <laughs> but because it's uh, more of a, we're acting locally in terms of like Waukesha, Wisconsin, but we're thinking globally. So we're trying to pull in like the entire as many people as possible to our websites to get the information that our practitioners here in Wisconsin are offering to everybody else. So it's the knowledge that you have, you'd be able to educate more than just the people in the area. That's, that's um, the other thing that we're doing too differently is uh, we have a speaker's jam. And oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. I can't believe I forgot about that one. So the speaker's jam is one month before the wellness fair. And this year, the Speaker's Jam is September 14th, and the Wellness Fair is October 28th. But the reason why this, we have the Speaker's Jam is uh, last year we, did, uh, we had multiple rooms for speakers at the fair. And they were all, uh, it was like Summerfest style, where there was just a, it's pick and choose who you wanted to see. If you wanted to see one person, you're going to miss out on somebody else. And the rooms weren't full. Like there were some people that pulled in like maybe 10, 15 people, but even to me, that's not enough. Like, I'm not satisfied with that number to, right. uh, to be a speaker. Me, personally, I'm a speaker, and I wouldn't want to speak in a room with 15 people only unless I knew that's the amount that's going to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, were, we took it down from five rooms down to one room, but then it was how to determine who it is that's going to, which five speakers are going to pre present there. And that's kind of where the idea for the Speakers Jam came from, is to have the... Uh, make it a whole separate event about a month before where whoever wants to speak can speak and there's no fear, uh, there's no charge to be a speaker with us. And um, at the speaker jam you have, uh, and you, depending on how many speakers, you have three to five minutes to pretty much wow the audience. Uh, you're essentially auditioning, you have a three minute audition at the speaker's jam to be awarded 45 minutes at the wellness fair. Oh, wow. That's yeah. pretty That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That's and, very nice. Yeah. it's. Uh, but the thing is, like, with, with that, some um, people are just like, oh, it's three minutes. But as they're going back to how I said, like, be a part of our event one time lever just for a lifetime, just by being a speaker there, we'll have uh, photographers there to get you speaking in front of a room full of people. We'll have video there so that you'll have that three-minute marketing clip as well. And it's another way to keep getting your information out there outside of just that uh, three minute slot at the speaker's jam. So you're able to continuously educate people by utilizing that video, whether if it's on YouTube or Facebook or wherever it is that you put it. Okay. So you can continuously use it and it helps us determine which five, present, which five people are going to be presenting at the fair because we have a panel of judges that we call super fans. Nice. Yeah. That's very cool. So now you've made a lot of changes to this uh, wellness fair. How long have you been running the wellness fair? Thirteen months. Wow, that's a lot of changes in thirteen months. Yeah, and I just wanted to do like small little incremental changes, and but <laughs> that didn't happen at all. No, but not I'm still at all. still holding back on a lot of other things that were. We're going to be doing, but yeah. Amazing. Now that's... that I look back on it, it was a lot of changes all in a very short time. But you know what? I believe that we have to be ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. We have to be ahead of the game. We have to be the people bringing in, um, being the ones doing it in a new way, mm -hmm. rather than playing catch up. Let everybody else catch up to what we're doing. I yeah. truly believe. Be, be an innovator. Be an innovator. That's exactly. The but the thing I'm is, like, I'm not innovating anything. All this stuff already exists. I'm just pulling it all together. And, uh, right. And that's thing. the innovation, though, because a lot of other people out there doing these fairs and are like have been doing them forever aren't innovating all of this together the way mm -hmm. you are. So that's a pretty incredible per 
perk for anybody who wants to be a part of this particular fair yeah. or get knowledge about the fair. Exactly, and then yeah. also go, uh, on our website we have a lot of resources. So after you are uh, have an approved profile, you'll never have to apply again. So you just apply once. I hate applications, so right, yeah. we <laughs> wanted to get rid of applications as quickly as possible. So it's just one application, but on our website we also have a lot of resources, like our whole resource area for um, wellness enthusiasts to get more information and stuff like that, how to utilize our our um, website and our community to get more information to connect with who they want to connect with is, and then going to just business owners have resources for them so that they're able to start uh, using more online tools to their advantage and then once you become a vendor or a speaker then you have even more access to trainings to really capitalize not only what you're doing in the wellness fair but if you're a part of any other fair or you do anything for that matter it's just a lot of trainings on how to leverage everything online and I know a lot of information it's just like why do I have all this information in my head and then it was just like I'm just going to give it away and well that's you know I believe I I wholeheartedly believe in that when we what we learn we're supposed to do that's part of our path to share with mm -hmm. others in one way or another yeah. I I so wholeheartedly believe in that now about how many vendors approximately are at the fair uh, previously we had anywhere between 50 to 70 and the reason why there was a big difference there is because we uh, bless excuse you excuse me thank you uh, the reason why there was a big difference is because uh, we changed the sizes of the booths so we gave them bigger bigger space obviously less vendors and now we're moving from the uh, one venue now we're going to the Waukesha County Expo Center How for the exciting. fall and we're gonna stay there for a while for quite a while shall I say and we're able to get anywhere like 80 to 100 vendors. It all depends on how many people take two, two spaces or three or whatever that might be. So that, I'm just going to say 80 for now. I have that's, no idea. That's a very exciting move also. That's, a, yes. that's another change that has come in with this, a bigger space, which makes it more comfortable for everybody. Mm, exactly. And for the people coming to the fair, that allows them to get more vendors in to be able to see more practitioners, what mm -hmm. they do, how they work, all that good stuff. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. How nice is that? So that'll be this year. When does the fair run? Uh, so we have many dates coming up with all the different, thi all the different right. things that we're doing. So the wellness fair itself is October 28th, Saturday, October 28th. Uh, the speaker's jam is September 14th and that's in Brookfield. That's at the Country Inn and Suites by Carlson on Moreland Road. Okay. And then we also have a, if you're a vendor, we have a kickoff dinner on August 31st. And you know, I'm just gonna throw this out there. I probably shouldn't. We're gonna have a community dinner on October 28th. So nice. after the fair gets done uh, at four o'clock, at 6.30 we'll reconvene somewhere else and have a uh, dinner with everybody that's in the community. Whoever wants to join is more than welcome to attend just to, because it's more about uh, the more we see each other, the more likely it is that we're gonna get to know each other. Very and cool. if we're seeing each other just once a year at the fair, that's not enough. I see people once a month and that's that, still not enough. It's <laughs> tough to remember people's names when you see them only every 30 days. Yeah. But So it's uh, trying to keep that consistency going so that people are able to develop relationships, actually create, uh, maybe possible collaborations, whatever it might be. Very so it's cool. creating that environment so that they're able to do whatever they want to do with like-minded health and wellness enthusiasts. I love that. That's so yeah. cool. Now, Lucas, you're also an author. That's, yes, I am. How many books have you authored? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that many, I, I was, huh? It's not that many. It's like eight or nine. Okay. Um, I started out in 2012. Actually, I can't really say the idea of me becoming an author. I'm not a writer. I'm an author. Okay. I, to me, there's a big difference there. There might not be to other people, but because uh, I'm not a writer, it's not something that I do and, you know, I need to write this down and do a lot of writing. But I was reading a children's book to my friend's kid, and after a few, after a few pages of going like dog, flip the page, cat, flip the page, and then just one word, flip the page, and it's like, anybody can write a children's book. 
Yeah. Like, I'm looking at this thing, it's like anybody can do it. And it took me about a year, that's when I, in 2013 was when I started to do training for life coaching. And during that time was when I actually finally came up with the idea of this children's book that I have here. So by 2013, 2014 was when I finally uh, printed and published my first book. It took me a long time because I was actually trying to get traditionally published by a publisher, but although everyone that I was talking to, and I didn't even, I didn't even call 10, but all the ones that I called said that that's not what they do. It's just like, oh, okay. So then I just taught myself how to do it. Very and then nice. since then it was just like kind of uh, snowballed from there. I didn't publish anything in 2014 because I was working on a lot of other stuff. In 2015 was when I published like the last eight or nine. Very cool. But so tell me about your first book, the one that you have here. This book is called I Am Children's Book. I'll take this one. I Am Children's Book for Positive Thinkers. And nice. the idea behind it is because I was on a uh, on websites just looking stuff up, and they have a lot of websites about affirmations, just giving adults affirmations. And then I thought, just like, and th this was during the time that I was taking the life coaching training as well. And I'm thinking, like, well, why don't we just give these to the kids so that yeah. as adults we're not screwed up <laughs> right. trying to fix ourselves? The sooner we can get in there with yeah. those good programs, the better it's going to be. Exactly. So that's where that idea came from. And this book itself is technically only 12 words because it has I am on the, on the left side of every page and then one word on oh, the other one. And there's, only, and there's only 10, there's only 10 affirmations. So it's like I am thankful, uh, I am healthy. Nice. Um, oh, the artist, David Murphy, he's from Sheboygan as well. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> so he'll be excited to know that uh, his art is yeah, being featured in yeah, this book and on the show. A lot of people love his art. And I've been, after I published the book and I started learning more about publishing and what books, like the power of a book, the perception people have of authors, as well as how to publish, because I wanted to, after I realized that I didn't do that well of a job with the book, because I kept learning. The more I learned, the more I realized that I didn't do a good job with this book. And I, it got to the point where it's like I couldn't even sell it or give it to anybody. Oh. It's like I just, I already like at least made the money back for the printing and, the, and to pay David. But other than that, it's just like, okay, I'm done. Like I don't even want, want to talk about this book anymore. And, and after a, like a couple months was when I really, uh, it was like I started getting feedback from people that already had the book. They're telling me how much they liked it and everything. Mm -hmm. And I was just, it's just like, really? It's just like you didn't see this error, this error, this error, this error. And the thing is, it's not an error that people would be able to see unless you're uh, auth like a, a publisher or right. a librarian. That's and librarians and bookstore owners were the ones that pointed out most of the errors. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's just like, oh, really? Yeah. Uh, but so after I learned everything and started realizing that people do like that book was when I started to like start selling it again and now I pretty much use it as one of my business cards. Very cool. And I've been using it as my business card for maybe a year. Now I gave it to a ton of people and over the winter I gave it to one gentleman named Thomas Ginn who is a uh, thinking into results consultant with Bob Proctor. He also is the owner of 180 Degree Financial Consulting and uh, Beyond the Mind's Eye. That's, That's his right. business name, is Beyond the Mind's Eye. I gave him the book because he asked me for my business card, and we started talking about just personal development, the success mentality, and obviously it gra like gravitated towards Bob Proctor because he also said he's a thinking into results consultant. I knew what that meant. And he ended up giving Bob Proctor, he went to Toronto, saw Bob Proctor after he got done speaking on stage, he went into the back of the room and gave Bob Proctor my book, told him my story, and he created a video for me. Isn't that just incredible? Yeah, like, that was. Like you can't plan those things. You can't buy that. Yeah. That's synchronicity right there. That's, again, destiny. Mm -hmm. So this book, a book that I, pretty much like 
said like I'm done with just because <laughs> yeah. of like all the different things. Like number one thing is the spine right here. When you put it on a bookshelf, you're ex extremely arrogant and narcissistical to think that your book is that that you're that important to where you can't have a spine on it so that okay. people don't know what the book is. Okay. That was that's the biggest error. So well, and to me, I don't even care. Right, and most anymore, most anymore. people would never even notice that or. Most people who are not in the business mm -hmm. wouldn't even think of that. Yeah, they would never go. Oh, this I because when they they're looking at it, they're looking at the front or the mm -hmm. inside. Yeah, because I right. would take up that much real estate when I put my book on a bookshelf so that you know what it is. Oh yes, yes. A, that's yes. like bookstores and libraries. Yes, yes. And it was just like hurt my pride a little bit, but I got <laughs> over it and so gave it to the right person. This book is in Bob Proctor's personal library. How? Not his studio library, because I just found out that he has a studio library and a, his personal library. Isn't that incredible? So personal library. Yeah, that that's... is so, so incredible. So Lucas, we just have like a couple, like a minute or so left. Is there anything else you would like <clears throat> people to know? I used to work for a real estate investor, and this was before I started doing the personal development life coaching, before I knew I had MS. And when he would give me a task, it only took me a couple of times to realize not to ask the question anymore, because I would ask him, like, oh, how do you do a, a certain aspect of it? And every time he said, figure it out. It's a skill, it's not a talent, it's not a strength, just say, figure it out. And you can figure out how to publish your own book. You can figure out how to do take a wellness fair and turn it into something that's no longer a fair anymore. So just say, I can figure it out. That's all I have to say, just because anybody can do it. It's just a matter of most people choose not to say it. That is amazing. Lucas, I love your story. I know your fair is going to go global. And I want to thank you so much for being mm -hmm. a guest today. And I look forward to all that is about to happen, not only with the fair, but with you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. cool. And I'd like to thank you for watching this edition of Create a Life You Love with Tony G. I also host Tony G Psychic Medium on WSCS and Messages from Above with Tony G on Ask One Radio. You can connect with Lucas or myself on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and other social media places. <laughs> I always forget all my social <laughs> media places. All that or, social stuff. Yeah, Where right. the millennials hang out. <laughs> exactly. Um, or through our websites, which are listed below. Thanks, and have an amazing day.